Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem reverse words in a string three. Even though this is an easy problem, I think it's still a good problem to practice. If you're a beginner, it's definitely a good problem. And even if you're not a beginner, I would encourage you to maybe with easy problems like this, try to time yourself, try to do it as quickly as you can without having mistakes, like try to get the problem submitted on your first pass and try to do it under 10 minutes, maybe even under five minutes if you think you're good enough. So we're given a string S, we want to reverse the order of characters in each word within a sentence while preserving white space and initial order. So it's kind of an extension of just reversing a typical string. You can see here, we're given a string that looks like this. We're not just doing a naive reversal of this entire string. Notice how this word is actually this word just in reverse order. So actually what we're doing is taking each one of these words and reversing it. And how do we identify a word? Well, you can see that in between each of them is a space character. And we're guaranteed that there's gonna be one space in between each word, and there's not gonna be any leading spaces or trailing spaces. So that's the delimiter. The space character is the delimiter. That's simple enough. Now, conceptually, we want to iterate over this array. We want to identify each word. We might even be able to take this input and you know, theoretically just call like a function called split, split it into the words, reverse the words, then join the words with a space character in between. Now that's kind of cheating at least in my opinion if you're just using a bunch of helper methods you're probably not tackling like the essence of the problem but who knows maybe if it's okay with your interviewer go ahead and do it this way but doing it the more traditional way we would basically iterate over each character until we reach the space character and at that point we would want to just reverse this and ideally we can do it in place. Now, depending on the language you're using, strings are immutable. So at least in Python, what I'm gonna do is convert this string into an array of characters or an array of strings. And then we can actually do this in place. And at the end, we can go ahead and actually take that array and then convert it back into a string. That should be pretty easy to do. But here with this, how do we want to reverse it? Well, the easiest way is using two pointers. We'd have one pointer at the left, one pointer at the right, and then we just swap these and then we shift the pointers inward. So simple enough. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, is as we're iterating, we're going to have a pointer, we can call it I or we can call it the right pointer, it's going to keep going until we get to the space character. Okay, that's easy. So we know there's a space here. So then we're going to start our right pointer here, like one to the left of that. Now, where do we start our left pointer? Well, for that, we have to keep track. Like for the first word, it's simple. Of course, it's going to be at the beginning of the string. There's not going to be any leading spaces over here. But what about the next word? Like over here, now we have a second word called take. Well, one thing we should remember is this is the last spot our space was, so we can put the left pointer here, or we could just uh, take the left pointer and set it to one plus this, because we know there's gonna be a new word starting over here. And then maybe there's another space character over there, and then we have our right pointer here, and once again, we solve the sub problem. Now, this is the part where I said, try to get the problem solved in your first pass, because actually there are some edge cases. Before you press that submit button, you always wanna think about the edge cases that you might be missing. Think about it when we get to the end of the word. What's gonna happen? There's no space there, right? But we still want to reverse this. If we are only looking for space characters, we're gonna end up not reversing this word. So we're not only looking for space characters, but by the time we reach out of bounds, we also at that point, we want to say, or actually not even out of bounds, like by the time we reach the last character, which we would know because it's going to be at the index uh, length minus one, by the time we reach here, we know that this is also a word, we got to reverse that as well. But it's a little bit different than when we reach the space. Because remember what I said, when we reach the space, our right pointer is gonna be one to the left of that. We're gonna initialize it here. But by the time we reach the end of the string, there's no need to take the right pointer and shift it to the left, because the right pointer is here. We don't wanna shift it by one over here. We wanna keep it where it is. So that's just another edge case. 
It's not super complicated, but you don't know it until you actually dry run through the problem or at least walk through it in your head. And yeah, eventually you can get good enough at this that probably you'd be able to solve this problem within five minutes and hopefully without having any bugs as well. Though I think like 10 minutes would be pretty good as well. But here we would do the same thing, just reverse this. And by the time we're done with that, we can go ahead and return the output. So time complexity wise, we're really just iterating over the input. We might have to do it a couple times technically because we're iterating over it and then we're reversing each substring. But either way, the big O time complexity is going to be linear where n is the length of the input string. Technically, if we are converting this into a list, we technically are using extra memory, but generally we don't count the output as memory. Now, technically the list is actually not necessary, but if you don't use the list, you still end up having to use extra memory by just like the string manipulation, by like taking substrings and then manipulating like this entire string. So, you know, depending on how you see it, technically we're using extra memory. We're just kind of getting around the constraints of the language. Okay, now let's code it up. So the first thing I'm going to do, like I said, is just take the string and actually convert it into an array, aka a list. And this is just because if we want to like take some index and reassign it to like another character, we can't really do that with a regular string, but we can do that with an array. So that's why I'm doing this. And when we return, we do want to return in the form of a string. So how do we get around that? Well, assuming S can, as an array, it contains everything we need, we can do this. So this is going to look kind of weird at first, but basically this is taking each character or each string inside of this list, combining them together, and this is going to be the delimiter. Notice it's an empty string because we're basically just joining all of these together without any new delimiter introduced. But now we want to do the two pointer technique. Well, I'm going to initialize the left pointer at the beginning of the string, and then I'm going to take a right pointer and just iterate over the length of the array using a for loop. And we don't really want to do anything. Most of the time, we're not going to do anything. But when we reach a space character, we got to do something then. Or when we reach the end of the array, meaning our index is at length minus one, then we got to do something. What are we doing here? We're going to reverse the string and we're going to use two pointers to do that, but we don't want to mess up this pointer and this pointer. So I'm actually going to take uh, a couple helper variables, temporary left and temporary right, and I'm going to initialize them. Temp left is going to be at left. Temp right is going to be at right minus one. Remember, because if we reach a space, then we want to actually take the right pointer and decrement it by one before we start reversing the string. But also there was actually technically a case where if R is actually at the end of the string, then we don't want temp right to be at R minus one. We actually want it to be at right. Or in other words, we could increment it by one. I don't know what's more readable, if this is more readable or this is more readable, but that's kind of what we're doing. Like depending on which one of these is true, we want to assign temp right to the right pointer or right minus one. We could have even initialized this with a ternary operator, but I don't think that's necessary. I think that would have been less readable, but uh, it's you know your opinion. You can do it the way you want. Okay, now at this point, our pointers are initialized. All we're doing here is just solving the problem reverse string. I think that's its own leak code problem, believe it or not. And if you struggle with this problem, I would recommend trying that problem first. But here, we're just going to iterate or be reversing the string while the pointers have not crossed each other. And it's pretty easy in Python. You can do that without a temporary variable. So here, we're just going to be swapping the characters in these respective positions. And when we do that, we take the left pointer, increment it by one. We take the right pointer and decrement it by one. And that's pretty much it. Now, the last thing, don't forget, we did talk about it in the drawing explanation, but it's easy to forget. What do we want to do now? Next time we find a string, we want to be able to reverse it. The right pointer is fine. It's going to be iterating through the string. What about the left pointer, though? We do have to update it. We don't want to keep it at the beginning of the string. So at this point, we're going to set left equal to right plus one. Why right plus one? Well, if right 
was pointing at the space character, we want left to be uh, after that space character. We want it to be at the beginning of the next word. What if right was at the end of the string? Well, then this loop would probably stop anyway, and then we'd return the result. So it works in both cases. Now let's go ahead and run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it doesn't look like it's super efficient here. And that's probably because a lot of people probably solve this problem just by using like the built-in functions that I mentioned earlier. So don't let that like percentage confuse you. This is a relatively efficient solution. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.